Good evening, good evening, y'all. What's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, Amen. We're going to first start off in decency and order, and we're going to come out of Psalms 119 and verse 133. And it says, direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. That is a declaration. That is asking God, let no sin control my life. Don't let this anger control me. Don't let this addiction control me. Don't let this depression control me. Don't let me always be on the edge thinking somebody after me. God, don't let it control me. Right now, you got to speak over yourself and say, I'm not going to let this addiction control me. I'm not going to let my relationship with certain people control how I act or say things. I'm going to let you guide my footsteps, God. God, we just thank you, Lord. We, we, we give you all the glory and the praise for bringing us here and letting us see another day, God. We just thank you for bringing us to the station safely. Continue to be with us. Continue to bless us. And God, we just ask you right now in the name of Jesus, God, to have your way. Have your will, Lord. Anything that is not of you, take it out in the name of Jesus. Let us be able to follow your will to the fullest, like it says in your word, Psalms 119 and 133. God, order our steps so that we can be able to show the world your will and not our own. God bless every listener. Bless everybody that's under the sound of my voice, that they can hear you, that a seed is planted so they can say, what can I do to be saved? What can I do to know more about God? And we, we love you, we glorify you, give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, y'all. Amen. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, we can praise say Praise the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. Like always, it's Pastor Jan. I got something to say. What I got to say today is this. Go follow me at anointed Jalon. Oh, you took too I, long. Forgot. I had a moment. Wow. I had senior a moment. Senior. Man. Blonde. Amen. A blonde <laughs> senior mixture <laughs> moment. Amen. So go follow me at anointed Jalon. You could go to pastorjalonkalhoun.com. You can follow me on Facebook at Pastor Jalon, J-A-Y-L-O-N. Just at that. You know, if you, at that. Just if you want to tag tag me, Chris, you could put at Pastor J A Y L O N and I pop up. My page pops up. We need some love. I just feel like I don't get tagged anymore. Don't but anyway, <laughs> putting the plug. Don't. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm just saying. So anyway, um, <laughs> we got some great things coming up. We'll talk about that church announcement. But Amen. one thing I want to say is coming up, we got some great partnerships coming up for 2020. We got some great things happening um, for 2020. My album is set to release 2020. All right. And I, it got a name. Y'all ready for the name? What's the name? Jesus 2020. Well, all right. All right. The Jesus. year of vision. Yeah. Hallelujah. My beautiful. God. Ah. Beautiful. That beautiful. Thank you. That yeah, yeah, that cool. Cool. so that 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 good, yeah, that good. Twenty twenty, Jesus. And my next single that will be released in January. Amen. Amen. So just give me a time, um, yeah, because I got a lot of other stuff I'm doing before I can get back on this music grind. Like, nah, I ain't gonna talk about it. Yet. Mm. But I talk about it in the first the first of November. I'll talk about what I'm, what else I'm doing. Okay. So, um, <laughs> yes, Did say it like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it. okay. Come on. What that? What that mean? What else I'm doing? Whatever else I'm doing. <laughs> Excuse me. Y'all got a lot of stuff too. Like Chris, he he, he been around the world and night. Oh yeah, yeah. Jesus. No, I have you have ah! been hey, in Las hey, Vegas. Let me let me how, let me say this. I gotta plug this in because I'm gonna have to tease oh, Chris boy. on this. How he do a whole interview and I did not know. And I got an email saying, Hey, I interviewed um, Chris on your show, what? and I want Dr. Marvin. And I said. I didn't even know he interviewed on another show. My and God. I'm like, I would it's like that one person who go get married and don't tell nobody. <laughs> I'm like, how you gonna go get an interview? We don't get we we wanna support. Amen. Listen, what had happened was uh -huh. it came literally came out of the blue. I was like, Who is this person? And he's like, I wanna interview. I was like, Well, okay, fine. And then he goes and then he and then he put it on, he was like, Yeah, I met Pastor Jay, and I'm like, 
For real? Okay. All right. It was he said he met you guys at the Key Awards because that's oh. how he got my that's how he got my information was through you guys. Really? So, okay. Oh, yeah, see so. your little car came in handy. My it did. God, it really did. Hey, see, look at that. See. So you next? He, well, he praise you. Jesus. And then if we can, let's try to get him on here too. Amen. Well, he already talked. I'm already. On, he, if he listening, I'm gonna email you back. It's just been busy. Um, <laughs> he gonna give you all that info. All the info, even Doctor Clay. Amen. Marvin Gaye and Etta James Love Child. There you go. Yes, Lord. So, um, <laughs> so um, what I was trying to think of something what else. What you were doing, November? Oh, November. We was going to go to the. I was going to go to the awards, but due to I have a respiratory issue right now mm-hmm. that I'm dealing with, the doctor advised me not to travel, especially to that side of the earth where it's freezing. So until I get that situated, right. I had to cancel going to the SpeakerCon Awards, which I was like deathly sick that I could not go because yeah. I'm nominated for two awards. And I'm like, what? That's okay. They'll accept it on your behalf. I saw that at a kid award all day. <laughs> you know, that's why I'm saying it. Yes, and Chris Johnston is not here at this but we time. But right now we accept him in his award. I said, y'all better stop doing <laughs> Kia like that. Y'all going to stop doing Kia like that. Right. Because it was so many people nominated. And, and won. And, and won. And then the Kia Awards had to be like, so they're not here, so we're going to accept it in their award. I said, if they don't come, bring they right. self. Right. You know, it should use, be a thing now they gotta they Now they got to use their stamps. But it should be a thing about that. It should be. If, if you, you don't show up, give it to the up, next person. You got to, it's the second <laughs> you know one. <laughs> you know they're not going to do that. I'm just saying, you know how they pull for them, they go, what the, the tickets? The raffle tickets. The raffle tickets. <laughs> <laughs> From the raffle tickets, you're like, hey, right. hey, hey, 47. <laughs> oh, he not here. 47 here? Okay, okay we're going to pull, pull again. Um, 52. 52. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You got the TV. They should have stayed. They right. should have stayed. <laughs> Amen. Y'all Just gonna learn today. Yeah. Be present. <laughs> Stay to the benediction. Amen. Right? Come on now. See, that's you gotta how you, say that. that. If you want to have a raffle, that's what the ter- term should be. You Keep gotta it say to the benediction. <laughs> that's how it works. Because <laughs> I, I can swear, oh. I bet you you'll stop seeing people going like this halfway right. in the circle. Like, well, I know I ran when we do raffles. That's how it works over there. Well, that's what you should do. They would at the end of the service. Amen. Oh, you gonna have to stay for this. Hmm. <laughs> Shame you got to bribe them, but you got to do what you do. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd it, it be like that. Amen. So what else you got coming up? Oh, that's it. That's, that's Pastor it. Jay. Oh, well, amen. Well, this is Dr. Marvinetta, uh, the love child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me add this. The one who been missing that we had to do all these plugs for, she could finally plug herself. Hallelujah. What you talking about? <laughs> hey, talk. I was missing in action for almost a whole week. It's all good. Look, y'all know sometimes things just be what it be, but we're here. Amen. Amen. So look, y'all know I always say y'all can find me on all your channels. Praise the Lord. Just look up Marvinetta or Dr. Marvinetta Clay, oh Clay M. Anything that says Clay Marvinette, you got it. And then the website, amen, you know that's going to be worked on. It's going to get better. But all right, go to Marv, Dr. Marvinette, clay.com. There it is. And um, you can go there and purchase that single. But you know what? Um, it's going to be some other stuff coming up. But there's some other things happening, too. It's like it's boggling minded right now. Because, you know, you, when you're not trying to do stuff. I'm, I'm, I didn't know what words you just that's said. That's what I said, boggling minded. Oh, okay, because I was about to say. Boggling. Hey, that word. word. Yeah, boggling oh. minded. <laughs> See, y'all don't know nothing. They don't know nothing about that, y'all. I'm sorry. You know, Anyways. that's why you're the doctor. You got, <laughs> right. got that education. I got public school education. No? Right. Don't be using big words. Oh, oh my God. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to take it as disrespect. Watch your mouth. <laughs> look at here, look at here, look at here. I went to DeVry. The I'm like, <laughs> you <laughs> said I went to the ride. Graduated Lord in 15 mercy. minutes. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Took all my classes in five minutes. Hey, Amen. I'm just playing. That's how you do it. No, I didn't. I'm just saying. Trust me, I got student loans to prove I didn't do that. Ooh, we won't talk about them things. Uh, but anyway, no, that's, that's a whole nother stuff. The devil. Yeah, God. Ain't but nothing. so anyways, y'all, y'all, you know what? God is blessing all of us as a team and individually as well. But um, you know what? Just look out for some stuff. 2019 ain't even over with. Right. So um, we still got a couple of more months. A couple of more months. So we're getting ready for the Christmas. Yeah. Well, him God bless you. 
Yeah. The plays. Hey, man. Lord. Praise him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, oh, man. Christopher Johnson. <laughs> 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 this is Chris Johnston. You can find me on all social media outlets um, at Sing Chris J. You can find me at SingChrisJ.com. Download Chasing After You. Yes, I just recorded an album. Woohoo! So that's Where that though? It ain't out yet. We ain't even did nothing to it quite yet. So all right. We got to go do the overdubs and all that stuff. Yeah. So and the, All the masters all the and masters mixing. And mixing. That sound like a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. But so we got that. So. Um, perfectly, the next single comes out real soon, and the album will be dropping in 2020. Amen. Amen. There's going to be a lot of albums Praise dropping Jesus. in 2020. Yeah, y'all got it but going I, on. I'm going to just say it like this. It need to be done before Stella, since we're going to have everybody no. in their mind. That's, what I, I'm, that's the push right now. I want it released right before Stella's. Yes, Lord. You know, February should be a very big month of releases. I'm just throwing it out. Sure everybody should. is going to do, gonna do their releases. Yeah. If you don't even do an old album, just at least do an EP or just even even a single. A new single you during know, that time. That's all. Mm, so you, you can know. be relevant and yeah. able to qualify for Stellar 2021. Amen. So. Yeah, you got to do that footwork. Y'all better get it going. Amen. Listen, I'm sure trying. <laughs> okay. Amen. So one thing I wanted to... Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about is um, prayers. Definitely send prayers out to the stamp, uh, the Micah, Micah Stampley. Stampley's family. Yeah, Heidi and Micah. Um, you know that's horrible. As a parent, I couldn't imagine to lose a child. Yeah, and I, I, I really just want everybody out there to take a time and just um, pray for them. You know, despite all the the music and the fame and all that, they're yeah. still a regular family with kids Mm -hmm. and now it's they got to learn how to live with missing somebody to pack and that's Mm -hmm. rough that is hard something i couldn't imagine so i definitely want everybody he has been a guest on the show he gave a great interview so i definitely say from anointed radio we are praying for their family i definitely couldn't just do we definitely going to be playing some of his music today as well but with that being said here we go. Oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh. Praise be God in his sanctuary. Mm-hmm. These are your church announcements. Mm-hmm. And we want you to govern yourselves accordingly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, these announcements is again brought to you by the Raiders. The Raiders and the, the and we're going to change it up to Golden Knights. Is that who it is? We don't they like live the Golden Knights. They live in their life like it's golden. Yeah, oh. they, I don't like the Golden Knights. We like the Raiders because they're building a new sanctuary over there. Oh. It's real nice. On the side of the road. It's, it's on, on the side. side. Right side. by Big Rock. Yeah. You can't oh. help us see it. Yeah, it's yes. a nice new sanctuary. They're going to they, they usher it in. They is. They're going to shine bright like a diamond. Yes, oh, it yeah, is. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have good worship in there. Uh-huh. Yes. Praise and worship, song and hymnals. Amen. Yes. We're going to put on a big screen. And it will be first. Oh, this one of the Blue Fangle Church. Yeah. Huh? It, it will yeah. be, it'll be first, first Sunday like every every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every, oh, yeah, because you know they like communion at this church. They sure yes, do. Yes, they do. Uh, every Sunday. Amen. No, they need prayer. Uh-huh. And we're going to pray for them. On the praise but the Jesus. church, these are the church announcements. Again, please govern yourselves accordingly. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have the duets, or the Chris, I think it's called the Christmas at the Cabaret. Uh-huh. That, that uh-huh. word that, that I don't word. know again. Cabaret. And so who the, the cab, cab is going to be on the way. On the way. There on you go. The That's it. Uh-huh. In a Christmas. Christmases. And then we're going to we gonna just what say. What we, we It's just, in December. It's December. Hold on, let me see. You know I, I believe to... Ram got some things coming up. Ram ain't got nothing coming up. What? what? That's a first. Blackout. Wait, wait a minute. I lied. Yes, you did. See? Tell the truth, Bring it back. Oh, okay, so wait. The Christmas, the Cabaret Christmas Missionary Church of God in Christ is on December Led 12th. Led by uh, uh. Bishop A.D. Pearson. Parson. 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 And his A.D. Pastor a- Antone, right? Yes. That's his name. Uh-huh. Parson. He's Bishop. He's doing bishop. Yeah, the A-D. Bishop. The, the Bishop. D. My bad. Yes. But he will be, he's the, the sponsor of that dare event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, the prelates of it. And, um, yeah, it'll be at the space, Church of God in Christ. That place. Amen. Get and to then, that uh, space. 
I forgot your reconciliation is having some stuff. They're having the Harvest Festival. Harvest. On the, like uh, every church all over the right. world. Actually, we call it the Hallelujah Fest. We come to give God praise and give money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why we got to yeah, yeah. be so difficult? And now, because we gotta you say got to Hallelujah, have the harvest. harvest Festival. Um, I'm, I know I'm saved, Festival. <laughs> Because you got to know this time is season. Look, because there's saved. a lot. Of, I'm not gonna throw no shades, but there's a whole lot of saints in Target buying Halloween costumes, but saying they say well, well, it's listen. plenteous. It's plenteous. Mm, well, listen, if you come into the Reconciliation Church, you cannot wear your costume. People. My God. Because we might think you're robbing the church. We this might cast the devil at you. Now look at him. Oh Lord. So basically, if you're going to dress up, make sure they're Bible characters. Amen. Like the Holy Spirit. The, yeah, you could be an Jesus. angel. Yeah. You could be Samson. Don't we, don't want you to be, we don't want you to be Jezebel or Delilah. Ooh, don't Can you be the burning bush? bush? How are they going to be a burning bush? It'd be a bush a that's on fire. My, my. Like the young people say, that's fire. The burning bush, hallelujah. But that's on know. the 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. And then they have what is called the singles blessing. Amen. Single. Where they're hallelujah. blessing the singles and they want you to be abstinent and celibate. What you saw? Yeah. What that is? Mm. Meaning that you're not doing anything you ain't got no business doing before okay. you marry. Okay, fast. Mm. Don't be fast. Yeah, don't be fast. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, that's for the keep, people keep it who have kept themselves yeah. old to be unto kept. the Lord. Old to be hallelujah. Kept. That would be, uh, yeah. I believe that's the second Sunday in November. Amen. Uh, at 10 a.m. So you can come witness that. This is a little bit too late for you to participate. Right. But you can come and witness and, that's all right. and participate Amen. on the next time. Well, you know, uh, we got seven women, seven stools. That's oh, right. This coming Saturday. up this Saturday yeah. at Second Baptist. I thought it was this on the Sunday. Nah, that, uh, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. It Saturday. I got the tickets. Uh, oh, you Saturday. got tickets. Yeah, if you oh, want VIP to, tickets. I'm going to have to holler at you later on my, you know, my social Social Security came in. I'm going to have to grab a few of them kids. I'm going to have to miss right. that one. I'm a little sad. Yeah, you're going to be in Chicago. Well, you be in Chicago. Yeah, Make sure yeah. nobody rob it. Anyway, we're going to stay be in downtown. Baptist. Oh, that's a perfect place. Yeah, for robbing. The mile, the mile, go, the gold mile. And the a wind going to tear you up. Yeah. All that good stuff. Woo! So we, I, just the, felt, I just felt that in my shot. She, she yes, felt it because she Jesus. felt the popcorn. Hot yeah, Lord. The, the real popcorn. The, 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 the peanuts Lord. on the side <laughs> of the road. Hot dogs. Until we get off this uh-huh. church announcement. Amen. Got to talk. Hey, amen. So we're going to go ahead and. Do um, we have any more church announcements? The other church Let's announcement see, uh, is. Is this Sunday? What this Sunday? Full Sunday, huh? Uh-huh. First, full Sunday. Oh, full the Sunday. city of refuge. Church of God in Christ is having their women's conference this weekend. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. They're over on Meadows, behind the Meadows Mall. Uh-huh. Yeah, so go and check them out. Check out their their, their social media and all the information. Amen. Amen. I don't know how to use Amen. it, but you go check it out. That, that good old computer. Uh, well. So, so I believe that's all the announcements. Um, uh-huh. Please, I think please so. hand out yeah, the offering so. plate. Um, we're going to because we're still raiding the building the fund. Mm-hmm. You've been raising the building the fund for 20 years. It's actually been 25 years. And we ain't got past zero. They still try to put a roof on the church. My God. See, that's the problem. The saints don't tithe like they, they used don't give. to. You know, the tithing, you tithing, tithing this tithing, is like cleanliness. You got tithing members, but you only got five of them. Why are you trying to build a church? Stay in the little storefront. I don't know. See, you ain't got vision. Anyway, oh. don't be talking about my past. My past know what to do. Amen. So, uh, <laughs> so we we gonna we go go ahead Come and, on, and close play, the announcements. Play. And he he close he 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 going out and he know it's time. Pastor yeah, collection. Is. Hallelujah. I tell you. And one thing I want to let everybody know. Let thy be loose. Yes. Yeah. My God. Amen. Yeah. Ah. Amen. Ah. Jesus. Thank you. Amen. So that was the church announcement. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that we miss, go ahead and email us. Amen. Because we're going to start making a list of our church announcement segment yeah. so yes. that you can have more. And I was going to be real petty and go with the jokes I keep seeing online. What? <laughs> but I'm not going to do that because the Lord stopped me because... He said, thou shalt not be petty. And Amen. I said, okay. Oh, he ain't tell me that. He's still working on you. That's why I say sarcasm is one of the many talents that Jesus gave you in the name of Jesus. Mm. Hey. <laughs> hmm. I'm not saved all the way yet. All right, you're still, still, still a work working in progress. They, they progress. They're still working Amen. on you. Oh, Lord. they still working on you. So we're going to go ahead and go into the mix, and we'll see y'all in a minute. <laughs> 
If you know your God is a provider, put your hands together like this. Come on. I know you as provider. Mm. I know you as provider. Keep providing for me. Hear me say now. I know you as provider. Yeah. I know you as provider. Uh. I know you as provider. Keep on. You keep providing. That's it. Say it again now. I know you as provider. Oh, no, no, no. I know you as provider. Oh, no. I love this next part. And I'll give, I'll give you all the glory and I'll give you all the honor because you never, never let, let me down. <laughs> now I'll give you, I'll give you all the glory and I'll give you all the honor because Ooh. you never let me
need your presence. God, now give us a new life. going into our interview phase and you know we definitely played you know michael stampley shout out to him him his new album created to worship with you with john p key and his new song i know you as provider i know i, I love know. that song that song is my song. jam that's a good song and we're going to go ahead and go into the interview and we're going to be introducing to some and reintroducing to others a powerful woman of god from the east coast she was repping her East Coast when we was doing our sound check. And I wanted everybody to know Miss Nicole Henderson, everybody. Nicole Henderson, y'all. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Amen. Hello. So we're going to start off like normal. We're going to start off like normal. Amen. 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 <laughs> I was like, if you don't stop, if you don't unmute my mic, what's okay. happening here? Hey, 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 hey. So, <laughs> so we're going to start off with an icebreaker question. Okay. And the icebreaker question is, what's your favorite animal and why? Favorite animal is an elephant. 
because of their vast memory that they have. And I have a real good memory. If you tell me something, I'm going to remember that you said it. Oh, that could be a good and bad thing. Yeah, I like it. Uh-huh. I like people that's forgetful. <laughs> yeah, I'll like be like, hey, hey. <laughs> Remember what I told you on Thursday? What you told me on Thursday? Good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> so just to tell everybody, Miss Nicole, where are, um, where is your hometown? Where do you reside now? And um, what's the other one? What's your ministry that you're currently um, part of? And what was the last question? I didn't so where is your hometown? Where do you reside mm-hmm. now? And what ministry are you associated with now? Oh, okay. So I'm from New York, Manhattan, New York, but the Spanish Harlem is where I'm from. And right now I reside in Port News, Virginia, and I am a member at Ivy Baptist Church in Port News, Virginia. Amen. All right. Amen to the Baptist side. Where the pastor is Dr. Kevin Swan. Okay. Amen. Amen. See, the Baptist comes out, y'all. You know what? Uh, I used to be Baptist. <laughs> you know, I was raised Baptist. Not wrong yeah. with Baptist. Hey. All day. Born and bred. Me too. Then went to the Apostolic. And then y'all went to Apostolic and y'all started yes. shouting. Then go non denomination now. Yeah. I'm uh, not denomination because, you know, yeah. uh, when we get to heaven, ain't no sections. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, you just like the absolute. <laughs> and 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 he teaches that way. He teaches non-denominational way. He he really does. He just wants you to have a relationship with Christ. He wants you to know the word for yourself, not just because that's what Pastor said. Amen. That's so, what's important. Really Amen. good Bible teaching going on there. Amen. Yes. Okay. So, getting started, can you tell us a little bit about your book? Yeah, so my book is called Take It Back, Your Strength, Your Mindset, Your Finances. And um, a lot of people for a while have been telling me to write a book, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to write a book. I just want to get out there and, and be amongst the people and and just talk to them that way. And they're like, yeah, but your book can reach so many other people, and if you don't write it, you're being selfish. And I'm like, I'm being selfish? And they're like, yeah, because... Your book can save lives. It can teach others how to persevere in ways that other people might can't teach it that way. Hmm. So I wrote the book. I self-published it in July, and it became number one bestseller on um, Amazon. And it's about my childhood of growing up in New York City and tragedy struck time and time and time again. And... um, showing how my mom pulled me out of that toxic environment to put me in a positive one. And also it shows my toxic relationships that I was in with the children's or my children's father and how I got away from those toxic relationships. And now I teach single moms how to get out of toxic relationships, how to meet their goals and just the tools and strategies that they need for relationship and finances and to have more time with their kids. Amen. That's awesome. Break down a little bit more about your classes. So um, as an overall, if there was a young lady out there listening, um, what what does the class entail fully? Well, the class is, okay, the class is online. So therefore, the young lady will be able to get on her phone, her smartphone or her computer or wherever she is and has access to get online. And we will have a weekly class where we meet up and we will have subjects that we go by. And and these are life subjects, how important vacation is, where vacation is a necessity and not a luxury. Mm. It will teach also how to leave toxic relationships safely because not every toxic relationship you can just get up and walk away from. Mm -hmm. I teach them how to, what their kids are seeing, because some some women just stay because, oh, well, this is my children's father. I need to stay, and we need to just make it work, and it's not working, and they're not 
realizing what the child is going through, Mm -hmm. how much anxiety and how much some kids just don't cope after seeing that type of relationship to where the kids don't have functional relationships when they grow up. So we cover all of those things because sometimes when you're in it, you don't see it. So true. So true. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's deep. Because I think a lot of people don't realize much of the effect that ha- that happens to the child. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the child might grow up to either become just like the father. Or, right. and it doesn't matter if it's male or female. It could be a female doing the same way and mindset as the father. Or they go into a shell. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust anyone. Mm-hmm. And have so much anxiety mm-hmm. where they're like, man, I, I don't know. You know, everybody out to get me. Right. right. That's mm-hmm. definitely where that that mentality comes from, especially because I, be, I believe we had someone on the show that says that our first heartbreak is from our parents. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can believe I, mm-hmm. I can see that. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I believe that me as a single mom, I'm my kid's first line of defense. I'm there. I'm there. For, well, God first and then me. Because, you know, moms are supposed to protect their young. And dads are supposed to, too. But when you've carried that baby for nine months and and you're the protector, and sometimes you get in these toxic relationships thinking you're doing something good, especially if that's their father, and where you're doing more harm Mm. just because you're in it and you can't see it. And sometimes Mm -hmm. it takes people from the outside of people who have already gone through this experience to say, no, listen, your child is being affected. Yeah. You got to do better. So if a young lady was listening right now, what, Mm -hmm. what would be the signs that you would tell them to look out for? Of toxic relationships? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Number one, jealousy. They're jealous if you have friends, they're jealous. If you have a village, they want you to their selves. They don't want to go other places. They just want you to be there with them all the time. They argue over the smallest things and they keep you back from your goals. You might have set something like, I'm gonna work out three times a week or I wanna start my own business. and they make it hard for you because they're like, oh, well, I can't watch our kid and it's your kid together, but they can't watch the kid or you know what, finances, they'll spend the money on something else and now it's not, you don't have any money to do anything that you wanted to do. Mm. Wow. That was deep. Maybe I know somebody out there listening to that was like, wow. Yeah, I I can I can understand how that is because sometimes, like you said, when you're in those toxic relationships, it's very hard to see on the outside mm-hmm. because you're so surrounded by the darkness of it to the point where you don't know what's right from wrong. You don't know um, how to make a better decision to help yourself to do anything better. And sometimes even with um, people try to come and speak. Um, something positive in you it may motivate you for a minute but then somehow or another that person fall back into that toxic relationship and so um, Mm -hmm. with that um, my thing is how would you go about um, encouraging other young ladies to um, to just just to just see things a little different um, in that relationship or just in themselves period because when it all boils down it has to be some type of encouragement enlightenment in them first in order to see things a little bit better Mm -hmm. i would encourage them just to listen like take one of the bible apps and just listen because sometimes when you hear the words of the bible that helps more than sometimes some people are readers, some people are auditory. And if you just listen to the Bible and listen to how the way God loves you and what God thinks about you and how God would do no matter what to always bring you in good relationship with him, 
if that's not the type of man that you are with that wants to constantly make sure you are loved, you are protected, and in good relationship with you, that's number one. Wow. Yeah. You have to know, you have to know what God thinks about you. Mm-hmm. And when that doesn't align with what that man thinks about you or how he treats you, you know it's time for a change. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. So we was talking earlier on the sound check and you was talking about your favorite scripture. Can you tell everybody what your favorite scripture is and why? <laughs> You know, we said I couldn't. Okay, so I have a lot, right? (laughs) Um, (laughs) So this is not a fair question because (laughs) I have a lot of of favorite scriptures. Um, But we did talk about um, Jeremiah 20, 9, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to give you a hope and a future, plans not to harm you. And that right there tells me if anybody around me is trying to harm me or hold me back in a negative way or bring in negativity to my environment, that's not the plans God has for me. Mm-hmm. So if that's not the plans that God has for me, then what am I doing there? That's not right alignment. And, and so you just fall right into what I wanted <laughs> you to talk about because um, I think that's one thing that helps people realize. You know, there's so many parts that helps people in certain parts of their life in that scripture well first is god has a plan for you Mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't even have a plan for yourself so if you know that Mm -hmm. god has a plan for you you should listen right the second part is he has no evil intent for you so all this stuff that people say you're supposed to do you're supposed to be a drug dealer you're supposed to be (laughs) addicted addict you're supposed to be Mm -hmm. all this because your daddy was Mm -hmm. this your mama was this and a lot of times we just fall into things because of that was our norm Mm -hmm. and we saw Mm -hmm. our you know especially when it goes down to what we're talking about relationships like now when Mm -hmm. um we saw maybe grandma and grandpa fight Mm-hmm. We saw mama and daddy fight and, you know, mama getting picked off the floor. And the, then people see that as a norm. Right. And then they mm-hmm. start saying, well, that's what I was used to. That's what comes mm-hmm. up with. But that's not of God's will. Right. A lot of people mm-hmm. think, well, God opened the door for me to marry this man or mm-hmm. marry this woman. So mm-hmm. I should just stick it out and fix it out, you mm-hmm. know. And, and mm-hmm. it says yeah. in the scripture has no evil intent. And then it goes into the the. The, the best one, right? Because it's like a phase of your relationship. It goes into the next one. It has hope. Mm-hmm. So there's a hope. Because when you're in a relationship where you feel damned, you feel like there is no hope. So he's saying, I have hope for you. Right. He has joy. Mm-hmm. A joy. Not just a happiness because he bought you something or she bought you something or she start giving you the, start acting right for the first week or two weeks and then go back. Mm-hmm. No, a joy that mm-hmm. cometh with peace and everything else. And then when you get suicidal because you feel like you can't get out, he says, I have a future a for you. A future. Mm-hmm. Come on, I love now. somebody. Yes, mm-hmm. you saw my mini sermon I just did in like, sure in like three minutes. There uh-huh. you go. Then, he, then there's a future. <laughs> so when when you sit there, you could tell the devil he is a lie because yes. I got a future. That's because right. the devil, the devil don't understand that God had a promise for your life. Because like Jeremiah said, God knew you in the womb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But don't let me get preaching. That's why I want to try to bring that back up because <laughs> I knew that would come in handy. Oh, Kept that in the back pocket. I'll put it back there. Yeah. Oh. It just stirred something <laughs> up in them. That's all. Amen. Right. Amen. So, um, you know, it's my preaching week this week. So, oh, you know, I'm preaching on just everything. Ready. Okay, I'm just amen. getting ready. It's my preaching week this week. Okay. Oh, a- I have a- Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one thing I would definitely say is what would you give a, um, a young lady? Um, what kind of advice would you give a young lady that's going through this and, and just needs that advice? That confirmation, that that word of encouragement. What would you give to them? Oh, pick me! I'm just playing. Chris, would, you, would. Chris want one. I'm, I'm gonna let you go. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> That's your sign. Oh. <laughs> it's the Lord. Did you hear the Lord? That's the Lord. <laughs> well, it remind me of Medea when you saw Joe in the back. Get out! Right. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's the straightforward way to say it. Absolutely. <laughs> but um, I would say this. You're no one's punching bag. You're no one's stepping stool. 
You are a beautiful woman who God wants to take and use to break through to other people and these plans and this vision that God has for you, these steps God has for you is so much more. And see, what we do is we run ahead of God. And we say, oh, this is the one God sent me. But is it really? <laughs> Was it really? Right. No. You know, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm guilty of it. Me I too. ran ahead mm-hmm. of God three times because I'm like, oh, I'm a good person. And then I just meet them where they're at. And God is saying, that's not who I have for you, though. Mm, so why right. are you sitting here crying? Why are you sitting here crying? Why are you sitting here stressed out? Why are your hair falling out? Why are you gaining mm. all this weight? Why are you worrying and crying all night? Because ain't nobody there. He ain't come home. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because that's not who I have for you. Because the one I have for you is going to solidify it. Not only marry you, but protect you. And not just protect your, your heart, your mind, your whole physical. Then to treat the kids like his own. Mm-hmm. You, he will be a provider. Because that's the godly man that I have for you godly women. And see, so. if you look scripturally in First Corinthians chapter seven, it explains mm-hmm. to you simply, if because I, I see I see this a lot. This happens in the in in all over. It don't matter what time frame it was, nineteen sixty two thousand nineteen. <laughs> it's happened a lot where somebody that wasn't in church got with this person because they was fine. <laughs> And that was a desire. Everything God wanted. Everything God wanted. And and, 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 and had all the desires of their heart. Mm -hmm. And God said, He'll give you desires of your heart, right? And then, but but in the Bible says, if you, because if you get with somebody and they are not saved, He sanctifies that because of you. Because your kids will still come out clean. Mm -hmm. But if they Mm -hmm. leave, let them go. go. That's the mm-hmm. book. That is what the word says. If they leave, you're in the book. Let them go because he. Because mm-hmm. the next scripture is so powerful. You can't change somebody. I'm no, paraphrasing. He was using examples. I know for all the theologians out there that try to come. That's not what the next scripture say. No, I'm paraphrasing. He was mostly saying in the examples, if somebody is away before you get married to them. They're going to still be that way. Mm-hmm. And the only person that could change them is That's God. God. That's mm-hmm. it. God. That's right. That That's point, right. period. That's the word. That's yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Read that whole thing. It talks about being single. It talks about being married. It talks about being a widow. It talks about being a divorcee. Mm-hmm. It talks about all that. So, and I, I, I was talking to my sister when I found that scripture. I was like, why we didn't read this? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that part of the Bible was missing when I was young because I didn't see the stipulations out there because a lot of people are like well i'm a christian i just don't know you know what how to date like you know because we sit there and be like can we do this no we can't do that or we can't because mm-hmm. we grow up with having all the no's mm-hmm. but Obstitulations. not knowing what we should be doing right. and how to pertain as a husband how to pertain as a wife and as right. you know and so on we just get married because we just we the we look at the worldly people and we just add jesus on it as like a spice like okay well we know jesus so we marry like them right but we go to church. Mm, but you still got problems. Right. That right. part. That part. Mm, you're just married to get it mm-hmm. so you can have a wedding. Well, a lot of people, like what Chris said, I liked your post. A lot of people get get ready for the wedding, but nobody get ready for the marriage. And be Say honest, that. be honest. Mm-hmm. Listen, I was mm-hmm. in a relationship, and that's exactly what it was. We're not gonna say who it was, but we're gonna say that's what it was. Right. And the only person really in the relationship was like, um, let's prepare for marriage, not for the wedding. Was mm-hmm. me because I understood. Right. And so, as you can see, I'm not married. But praise the Lord. But that, but that's a deep thing because a lot of people get into relationships prematurely. And like I, mm-hmm. a, a deacon told me back in the day when I was dating somebody that was I was engaged to saying, yeah, I was unequally yoked. A lot of times I thought people just hating. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people don't, you know, I felt like all older folks in horrible marriages was just mad because they see young people in love and that mm-hmm. we hug and hold hands and y'all don't <laughs> even look at each other no more. So I thought people was just hating. Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought the deacon was hating. But I understand now that I'm older, I'm starting to understand mm-hmm. because as an adult mm-hmm. and you've been through something, you can identify 
signs, mm-hmm. warnings, right. and, and you can see certain arguments like, oh, I know how this is going to lead in a few years. Oh, I know right. how y'all acting towards each other now. That's mm-hmm. definitely going to lead to this in a few years. Mm-hmm. And it was true. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one thing that as young people, if you're listening, you got to know. Somebody in my Bible study said simply, because, see, we prepare for the wedding, Right. But then we don't realize who we attach in our bloodline with mm. because a baby, because, mm-hmm. you know, just for my ghetto folks out there to have, you know, baby showers before weddings, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just throwing it out there. Mm-hmm. Um, you, that is more permanent than a marriage yeah, it really mm-hmm. is. because you mm-hmm. are grandma with him. Mm-hmm. You are grandpa with her. You, your family, they family is connected mm-hmm. forever. Mm-hmm. And definitely. See, the marriage mm-hmm. is a symbolic version to show I could come as one bloodline with this person before mm-hmm. there is a true bloodline with this person. Mm-hmm. Then when you have a child, just to break that down if nobody never knew this, when you have a child, now that you made that symbolic promise yeah. into flesh, yeah. which commitment. becomes one, mm-hmm. yep. that one's one bloodline yep. from two people. And now they, your family, mm-hmm. they family together. And somebody in my Bible study at church, he was 12 years old. He said, and I said, why do you think you should um, know the person you're marrying? Um, you know, why? No, I said it simple. I said, like, you know, why should you wait till marriage before having kids? And he said, so that you can know who you, so you can know who you are dealing with. Mm-hmm. It was so mature. I was like blown away. I was like, how do you, what do you mean? Yeah, he had no relationship but out the mouth of babes he said so you can mm. know who you're dealing with yeah. because a lot of times people get mm. married and be in a situation where they don't even truly know who this person is yeah. and then when they get mm. together they start seeing, seeing some things that they was like whoa yeah. whoa whoa yeah. dude yeah. hold on girl mm. where, where this come from yeah Mm-hmm. That ain't nothing but the- <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. You the, you devil. the devil. You the devil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Beelzebub. I am done with you, Chris. So, <laughs> right now, Miss Nicole, you are out speaking. And I definitely want to talk about, you know, how you're out speaking. So, um, how is that going with your speaking engagement? I, where I am currently or just speaking, period. In general, and uh, what you doing now? Just in general, um, I'm I'm doing a lot of speaking engagements and just getting into the communities. And um, I've been doing book signings, and currently I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. She's and, at the um, Pax. I, <laughs> and I um, just did a book signing, and uh, and I was one of the keynote speakers at Harvard Faculty Club. Nice. That's and, dope. And um. And it was it was it was really powerful. I talked on about vacation is a necessity, not a luxury. Mm. And I um and I and I just had a great time meeting the the different people, and it's it's beautiful out here, and it's not that cold, thank God. Because awesome. I mean, I know I'm from New York, but I wasn't ready for that Boston weather. Like, you ever been in Boston in the winter winter time? It's not in the place. It's horrible. <laughs> horrible. 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 Is it worse than Chicago? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, Chicago is worse. Chicago nah. is worse. Chicago, than Boston? Oh, yeah, Chicago is nah. worse. <laughs> I say Boston oh, takes the cake. Wind, yeah. That, yeah, the no, wind in Chicago it, kill you, but the how, wind, yes. how how in Boston that cold, yeah, that's that cold, cold, that's some yeah. cold for you. That's that cold that goes yeah. through your bones back and forth like a ball, like boom, 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 yeah. boom like you get mad. <laughs> you know, you know what's funny? I just I, I don't know if this is an East Coast thing, but is everybody in the East Coast got fur coats? <laughs> because me and Doctor Marvin just came out of the That's East Coast. That's why I look straight at her like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like we we came from we went to Columbus a few weeks for the awards, and everybody and their mama had a fur coat when we went outside. We looked like we was inadequate. Like we hold didn't on, even have we didn't a coat. Have on. a coat. We like <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> we wait a minute. Is we supposed to have jackets like that? <laughs> Is it snowing outside? Did it change when we came? And then you know what's funny? I see this. I saw this with everybody. When everybody gets some, a fur coat on. They do that little bounce, <laughs> <laughs> and they and they clinch their jacket like they big mama. Uh, like they, they feel they, good. They, boo. They, they did that little shoulder. Yes. They, do, they they hit them with the shoulders. Hit them with the shoulders. That's what they be doing <laughs> when they put it. <laughs> Just 
honey. But them oh, first was looking good, oh, though. Man. They were it was. looking good. I wanted one. They really were. <laughs> you could have got one at Burlington. <laughs> no. No. They, they weren't from Burlington. They were not. They were mm -hmm. custom made. We talked to the people. I said, where did you get that? But anyway, back to the interview. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you were actually on NBC. I was. I was on NBC Palm Springs out in California on a show called Tipping Point. And um, it was a great interview, um, just talking about the book, talking about how when I was five years old, it was so bad in New York City because I lived in the projects that my mom sent me to this program. And it's called the Fresh Year <coughs> Program, Fresh Year Fun Program. And within that program, they take the inner city youth kids and then place them with a family in the suburbs for two weeks in the summer. So at five years old, my mom sent me with some strangers just to get me out of the city because the shootouts were getting worse and everything. And then that's when the crack epidemic was like really, really bad. So my mother had to get me out of that environment for just a little bit. But mm. it blessed my life. It blessed wow. my life. Cause Amen. I'm telling you, I went from a three bedroom apartment on the 15th floor to now I'm at <clears throat> my family's house and their 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 last name is Lafferty the Lafferty's and, and I have a they have a daughter that's my age and then a mom and dad and I tell you when you walk in there's a basement then it's the main floor then there's another floor and then there's another floor on top of that the house was so big I've never seen anything like that wow. you know at that age and then just being able to walk down to the beach that was three blocks away and just total wow. safety in a town where everybody knew everyone. Um, they belong to a yacht club. So I'm this little on a yacht and I'm sailing sailboats, learning how to swim. Cause you know, in New York, like 90% of the people don't know how to swim mm -hmm. in New York. And um, you know, just, just learning so many different things and just seeing how life really could be. So that, that really was a blessing. So awesome. yeah. Wow. I just want to go back a little bit, and, and can you just mm -hmm. elaborate, because I, I keep hearing what you said about this vacation thing. So can you mm -hmm. say that again and, and just elaborate on what you mean <laughs> by that? Okay, so I said vacation is a necessity and not a luxury. And so, see, some people think like, oh, I'll get to vacation whenever I can. And no vacation equals an early death. Mm. They what? have done research. Yes, they have done research. I'm gonna die. And they, they, have, <laughs> you gonna die? <laughs> at early death. They no, um, don't speak so that on me, Ricky Bobby. Hold on. On, <laughs> on women. So don't take offense, men. I didn't do the research on you, you men. But for a woman, a woman that has taken one vacation every six years or less has. Uh, eight times higher risk of developing coronary disease, cardiac disease, developing a heart attack, having a heart attack, and dying early of coronary-related causes. Wow. Eight times more likely than a woman who takes vacation twice a year. Mm. And before I found this research out, I was actually taking vacation three times a year. I would take two adult um, vacations with my coworkers. So I would do that twice a year for eight days. I would go to an all-inclusive resort. And then I would give the kids their vacation for eight days, and we would go down to, like, Florida or something like that, Universal Studios or Disney or something like that, and have my time with them. So not even knowing that... The amount of stress you build up, the bad sleep habits you form of not resetting and and recharging and taking that time. Mm. Wow. I, be, I believe yeah. what you're saying. I really do. Because, you know, I, I was one of those that didn't take too many vacations because, you know, you've like, I got to work, work, work. But this year I said, mm -hmm. you know what, well, forget that. I want to live, live, live. Mm -hmm. 
and um, it is a necessity. And so you are right about that as far as regrouping, um, restoring yourself, and renewing your mind and your body all at the same time mm -hmm. because it definitely, definitely is necessary. So thank you so much for um, bringing that up. I really appreciate that. So yeah. what's your next project? <laughs> My next project is this online class um, for the single moms. I am enrolling now, starting now, and it's going to be enrollment for this session until November 11th, and it will start on November 13th. And it's to give these single moms the tools and the strategies and the support that they need for the goals they want to set for relationships they need to get out of and just any specific thing that they need. And they'll, well, they'll have group coaching, they'll have one-on-one -on -one coaching, but we're going to change some lives in this course. And um, I've also started a single mom perseverance fund. And this is where people can go to my website and they can actually sponsor a single mom because some single moms can't afford the program and I'm gonna tell you this guys God has told me like I, I'm, I'm a labor and delivery nurse right I'm a registered nurse I'm a work labor and delivery and I love love delivering babies and God has told me this for a while he's like I'm calling you to do something else but he said so in January you have to go part-time there because I have work for you to do. Hmm. I have a different set of lives for you to save and impact. Wow. And that was tough for me because when I tell you, I love bringing, helping bring life into the world and then bringing life because sometimes I deliver the babies myself. And <clears throat> to go from not doing that, you know, so he, he got, he, he let me at least go part time coming up this January 2020. And I said, I trust you, God, because I don't have the whole plan. And I know you can see around corners, and I know you will provide. But you know I'm a mom of these kids. I got three kids, and you know they depend on me. You first, but then me. And I'm trusting you, and I'm walking out on faith to put this paperwork in to go part-time. Because I know what you have for me to do. I want to be in alignment with what you have for me. So that's why I started this, you know, because I know how it is not to have the finances to do certain things, especially when you are the sole provider in your household. So that's why I started the Single Moms Perseverance Fund, where the sponsors can sponsor one of the single moms to go through the course to get the things that they need. So we can start breaking some of these generational curses. Mm -hmm. You don't got to... Mm -hmm be abused just because your mom was abused. You don't got to live with a man and not be married just because that's what your mom did. You know, you don't, you can, we, we're going to break all of those generational curses. The, those are not going to be the norm. What, what their norm is that isn't what God has for us. We breaking all of that. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I believe that what God is, is doing with you is that um, although you love doing what you do as an, um, in your natural sense of work, um, on the same token, you're still going to be doing the same identical thing, but just on a different level. You know, you'll just still be bringing life, mm -hmm. delivering life out of other, mm -hmm. you know, other people that are not actually having babies, but they are. They delivering themselves. Right. Yeah. So right. I believe that's where God is, is taking you. So you'll have a two-part thing that's going on, and I'm excited for you. Amen. Thank you. So where can everybody find you? <laughs> everybody can find me on my website at www.unstoppablenicole.com, and they can find me on IG at Unstoppable Nicole. So again, she said unstoppable, unstoppable, unstoppable yes. Nicole dot com, and then on about. IG, follow her and and single ladies and 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 the people that's out there with single ladies that got kids, hit her up on Instagram mm -hmm. to find mm -hmm. out about her class. Um, and then if you in a toxic relationship and you need a pen pal, hit her up on her DM mm -hmm. on Unstoppable Nicole, and she could give you some gems, y'all, to help you get out the situation that you're going through. Mm -hmm. Because 
the devil always wants you to think that you're the only one that's been through something. Mm -hmm. But God has had people that is placed purposely in your life so that you can find a way out. That's right. So that you know that you weren't the only one. And guess what? That's why our testimony is so important to be told, to show that bondage is not a way of life, that you can actually break every chain. Mm -hmm. And and like John and Reynolds said, what? Break every cycle. Mm -hmm. Break yeah. it up. Yeah. Right. So um, right. thank you for coming on to the show. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you for having me. Oh, it's been great. You know, New York, you Miss New York, New York, City of Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you coming out here and, and, and know that here in Anointed Radio, now that you've came on to the show, you are like family. So if you're having anything, another book release or any event, let us know. We'll definitely promote it. And if you're here in the okay. city of Las Vegas, definitely come by the studio. We throw, if we got interview, just come on the show with us, Amen. and we'll just and you can Add interview, you and we just bring you on in. <laughs> so absolutely, we appreciate you for spending time with us because the most valuable thing in the world is time. So we appreciate time. you for that, and we thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And y'all have a blessed night. You do you the too. same. God bless. All right. Amen, y'all. Wow. That was deep. That was. Yeah. That I might was. need to hear that. Yeah. See, God always works something out where a, a, a gem or something underlining mm -hmm. is put as a message so that somebody out there can hear. Mm -hmm. That's why people need, everybody need to listen to Anointed Radio. Yeah. All our episodes got gems. You just got to listen to them. Yep. And we got about like 100 episodes almost. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just go to your podcast. And listen. And listen. You know, if you got Spotify, we there. there you if go. you got Pandora, we there. Amen. If you got Apple Podcasts, we there too. Google Podcasts, we there. Mm -hmm. iHeartRadio, we, we there. there. Radio.com, we, we there. there. And, and Spotify. We there. And, and they make your playlist and they got podcasts. See? So what, it's, it's twofer. It's yeah. a twofer God. one. It's my God. It. It won't he do it? Won't he will. Thank you. So my definitely God. go subscribe to Anointed Radio Network Podcast where you'll hear this on on our next upcoming uplink. Mm -hmm. So because it's always a good message in Anointed Radio. Yes, we are a Christian platform, but we are all about truth, hope, and progression to help somebody get out of the situation so they can be elevated. Amen. Amen. I just in all kind of preaching. You terms all in the preaching mode. Right. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Break every What's cycle. His I said, save it to the his kid. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be too high. Yeah, that's too high. That's what you, mm -hmm. No, no. Uh, oh, it's that one. That's his kid. That's his kid. Uh, yeah. Y'all squalling. <laughs> I, I can't squall. That's your yeah. kid. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holiday. <laughs> Clean us. Yellow. Come on in here. So it's about that time. Now it's time. Yeah. And if It'll you want to. Yeah, because Chris and I got to get out of here and go to Chicago. Yeah. Boy, yes. And tell our good friend Christina Bell we said hi. Okay. I believe she's going to be out there at the same event. Uh, world changes? I believe so. Oh, okay. So if she's there, go ahead and tell her, say hello. And uh, Dr. Stevenson, hey, tell him we said hello. If I can see him. Yeah, amen. We're going to speak that automatically. Amen. Existence. See him. We're going to see him in the name of Jesus. Yeah, and then and then eventually you're going to pass the card of anointed prayer and be like, hey, you want to come on the show. Make sure you take some of that. That might be able to, you know, we might be able to work that out. Right. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There you go. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh-huh. So, um. Go follow Anointed Radio at LV Anointed Radio on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, everything on your social media platforms. Um, and what I want to leave to you today, I'm going to be, be real preacher today. No, I'm not. I'm going to be real basic because I'm going to save it for Sunday like Chris said. What I want to leave with you today. <laughs> yeah. Put Joe Austin on. In his closing. What I would leave with you today. <laughs> you have the greatness within so you have to search it through the word of God. Amen. Through prayer, mm -hmm. supplication, and fasting. You can make it through anything. Yes. Because you can do all things through Christ. Yes, you can. That strengthens me. 
Amen. That was a good Joel Olsen? That was cool. Okay. Yeah, I just yeah. thought it out there. Yeah, you was just on the lower one, but that was good. Yeah. yeah. That was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Amen. Well, you know what? I'm going to say hi. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, but look, you know, uh, y'all know we always say it, but follow us on all those things. But, you know, what's really important is the message that we delivered, that what, that, that what God delivers. Let me say it like that. Um, we're just a conduit. And Amen. so since we're the conduit, God is allowing this platform for many people, just like the young lady that you just heard. And I'm sure there's other people that are out there. But the thing of it is, we pray that this message goes abroad to the millions of people. To the masses. And, yeah, to the masses. And that it will touch somebody's heart because yes, somebody need some help. And you may be in that toxic situation and don't have a way out, or you feel like you don't have a way out. But you heard tonight, there is a way out. So just reach out and touch because all of us have been in some type of form of toxic situations. And so God has allowed us to come out of it. But I want you to know this. All you need is a little bit of hope and you need a grain of a mustard seed of faith. And God will tear down every mountain that is in your life. All you got to do is believe and trust him. Amen. Amen. And this is Chris Johnson. You can find me again. On all social media platforms, seeing Chris J, seeing Chris J.com. And I would say to piggyback on Dr. Clay, um, like the word says, you have a hope and future. So don't allow your situation, your current situation, to keep you in bondage to where you feel like you cannot get out. Mm-hmm. Right. The word of God just told you that you have a hope and a future. Yes. So the, what the, your present situation won't keep you down. So reach out to somebody, like she said. And get some help so you can get to your hope and That's to your it. future. Yeah. Right. Because it, it does not have to be this way. Not at all. Amen. And the, get out. <laughs> get out. And don't forget the vacation. And don't forget the yeah. vacation. <laughs> I, that was my yeah. that was, that yeah. was my takeaway. Word. That's my word. That's my takeaway. Oh, hallelujah. I shut it down. Yeah, Lord. I, going for eight days like she I'm about did. to be gone. I felt that in my shining now. I, I, and, and sponsored mm. by Air Affordable. Amen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Lord. Amen. So um, if you don't know what airfordable.com, you need to look, you it, need up. To look it up if you want a vacation on a budget. Amen. But amen, we're going to go ahead and, and say, God, just bless Chris and his and his traveling yes, grace as yes. he heads to Chi-Town. My God, town. just give him the, the, the hedge of protection and yes, Lord. have the angels just touch the planes yes. and yes. calm the storm. Yes. And, and let him get there. And safely. back safely. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And while he's there. And while he's there. Amen. Because you know they be shooting. Amen. So we. we oh, from Oakland. You know what's up. Amen. <laughs> now he's all good. Yeah. The hedge of protection is all around him. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we'll see y'all on Sunday. Yeah. Amen. Bye. Adios. Peace out.